Hey guys, here today showing you how to replace the air filters on a 2013 Mercedes GL450. This would be the X166 chassis, X166. Um, they started making this from 2012 until now. There was a facelift in 2016, but that shouldn't really matter most. Um, this is the M278 engine, which is the 4.7 liter twin turbo V8. Um, it's really not diff too difficult to do these. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, plastic pieces that you gotta be careful with. Um, but yeah, it's, let's just get right into it. You shouldn't need anything else. Uh, flathead screwdriver, seven millimeter uh, socket, uh, you may need a Torx bit. I am not sure yet. I'll let you know when I get there. But uh, as you can see, this has a damaged um, air intake, air inlet tube right here. They always break. I don't know why Mercedes keeps making these out of fabric. I, I, I mean, I know why. It's to keep the heat down. But really, it doesn't matter. They get heat soaked anyway. So anyway, that's besides the point. So if these so happen to rip, like this one already has, this customer brought it to me like this. Um, then it is what it is. You can go buy a new one or you can do your best to repair it. They are pretty fragile. Um, these just simply pull, you can pull off the back. They just pull off of the, the inside like this for both sides. I've already pulled this one off. And also too, you'll note that there's a cover right here. There's not one right here. It's the same. It, it just, it just pulls off like, like that. I pulled this one off already. And then, um, right down here, you'll see where these come in. There are little uh, notches there. It's best to get like a flathead screwdriver to help you pry them off as best as you can. Like I said, these things can be pretty stubborn sometimes to remove. Um, you'll just have to wrestle them a little bit and eventually that you'll get them off. So we'll go ahead and remove both these and set them down to the side. like so you can just set them to the side okay those are now off you can go on ahead and focus on removing the plastic covers you already saw me remove this one right here they just lift off they're just held on by little uh, metal tabs so you can just lift them off there would be one right here too just lift that one off the center one you just grab right here and lift it up don't flip it up super hard because you'll snap it in the middle there are two like tabs right here in the middle so just get your hands right here them off and there's two in the back and you can just set this down on the side okay so what you'll be looking at now is uh, these are the charge pipes from the intercooler coming up into the air filter housings on both sides this does have two air filters um, these are just um, press fit down onto the top of the cylinder heads um, you should not want to loosen up this connector and this connector here. I mean, you might have to loosen up both just to give you some wiggle room, um, but you shouldn't have to remove these at all. Uh, so go ahead and just loosen these up. Don't take them all the way off, just loosen them. This is a seven millimeter socket. Okay, so now if you follow this here box straight back to the back, Right, right, directly right attached to the back of the uh, this box. There is a wiring connector. Um, this side you don't have to worry about it too much. You can see the connector flows right here. It just it it just goes on to the back. You can actually what you can do is just disconnect this here connector right here. There is a little plastic gray tab. It needs to come out. Just use a screwdriver, and um, and you could just pop it out like so and then the connector will come off like that so this side will be good to actually lift up and raise up now you won't have to worry about uh, any wires getting caught let me see if I can zoom in on that so you can uh, see what I was talking about this is the little connector right here it has a little little gray tab right there you can see on it right now the gray tab is pushed down um, you you need to pretty much just pull this tab away from the connector. It won't come all the way out. You just pull it out a little bit and then you'll be able to uh, release it from its clip. 
just like it is now. The same goes for the connector that's on the back of the uh, other side. So this is the passenger side or driver side if you're in the UK. And this is the um, driver side here in the US. It has the same type of clip that's in the back. Just release, just push the little plastic tip tab outward and it'll come off. Okay, so now pretty much you need to lift up this entire unit. I would probably start by lifting up the back first. It, it just literally pops straight off like that. And then you can, um, you'll probably just want to actually just remove this whole piece along with this plastic. Don't forget to take this off right here. Um, be careful with this stuff. You don't want any uh, cracks or anything because then you'll get vacuum leaks and these things are pretty particular about vacuum leaks. So you just pretty much just have to lift these off, kind of maneuver it off the pipe here. There is a small connector that's right here, right in the middle. Let me see if I can get you a better angle on it. Okay, now, so for the driver's side, um, or the right side of the engine as, as I'm looking at it, you can see I already got this guy out. Um, we disconnected the connector that was in the very back there, that one that's right there. It's very similar to this one here that has a little um, tab that you need to pull out in order to get it out. However, there is this there is this piece here which I'm pretty sure goes to um, like a map sensor now I don't believe that this releases from there I mean you you can take this connector off right here by squeezing the tabs and pulling it off of this hose we need to remove this this box out of here so what I suggest you do and unfortunately this probably isn't the right way to do this but it's really not gonna harm anything as you can see this this hose right here goes down into this piece right here. You can either disconnect the hose right here with this metal tab. You need a special tool for these. I just use a flathead screwdriver. Or you can disconnect it down here from, from this guy right here, that one right there. Um, pretty much these are like one-time use clamps. Once they're on, they're on. But if you use a uh, flathead screwdriver, like say right here on this guy, if you use a flat edge screwdriver and just come up right underneath the end of the tab right here, you can actually pry that guy off and it will loosen. And then you just get yourself a regular hose clamp and just go on ahead and use a normal, you know, like a screw type hose clamp. Pretty much just like the ones that are on here. Not this big, obviously. But just get a regular clamp and that'll be fine. So for this side, this is your only struggle is trying to decide what you want to do with that hose. Over here on this side, um, you'll have the same type of situation. You'll have this hose that goes down into the valve cover. Um, I do not recommend trying to take that off as you might crack something or break something. Instead, just remove this housing from this here rubber connector and everything else will be fine. It'll come right out and you won't have any issues. So I'm gonna get to work on uh, getting these out now completely. As you can see, the method I chose was to take and break that hose clamp, this guy right here, break the hose clamp off. We don't really break it, you kind of just bend it a little bit and it comes off. And uh, I'll just replace that hose clamp down there with a regular screw type hose clamp. So now that I can just remove this hose from that there breather and um, uh, looks like a PCV valve. I can go ahead and just pull that hose off and remove this whole thing as a unit. Okay, now that you got both of the housings off, um, you can go on ahead and flip the housings upside down and you will see underneath the housings there are various T25 Torx here, one here, one here, one here on the side. There appears to be one, two, three, four, four total around one, two, three, and four, on, excuse me, three and four on the top. Once you loosen those, loosen those up, you should be able to get to the air filter.
Wow, this one is completely filled with sand for some reason. Let me take this off camera for a minute. The inside, the bottom here, I'll wipe that down before I stick it back in. And for some reason, this one is filled, gunked up entirely with sand. It's stuck in here. Now you can take and put the air filter back into the portion with the oval type hole. Just like so. Make sure it's seated all the way in there. Excuse the background noise, I'm sorry. Um, make sure that it's seated all the way in there fully. Then leave this like this and put the other piece right on top of it. And um, then you can go on ahead and screw it back down and you're good to go. So. Um, you can go on ahead and reinstall it back onto the car now if you'd like or go ahead and replace the other one first and then put it back on. However, which way you want to do it is fine. Um, I'm going to go on ahead and reinstall this side back because I'm done with this side and I'll reconnect the connector that's right here. Okay, so that side's done. I'll move into the other side now. Same, same process as the other one. The amount of sand in these are shocking. I'm using a man filter C3397, as you can tell. These are OE filters. You see, well, probably won't zoom in, it says Mercedes Benz Daimler on there. So these are OE filters. Obviously, there is the the filters that are in the Mercedes packaging that say Mercedes on the box, but I promise you this is the same filter that's in that box. As you can see, the, these are the these are the stock Mercedes. It's on the, on the dirty one. These say Mercedes Benz right on the end. I don't know if you, it'll zoom in on them, but it also says Man Filter. So there's no sense in you going to buy a. OE Mercedes air filter where they charge you more when you can just get the same exact man filter for probably $15 cheaper. The top tip for you guys when you're buying your OE parts, do a little bit of research and you'll mostly find that the parts are available much cheaper even though they are the same parts so they're just branded differently. Okay so get that back on and we'll go ahead and screw this guy back on. Okay, so as I said before, I broke this clamp, so I'm gonna go get a different clamp for this, just a regular screw clamp, but you can go on ahead and reinstall it back into place now. Okay, I got that back reinstalled. I am gonna go get a clamp and put a clamp onto that piece. Don't forget to reattach this here piece in the middle. Um, the one that you need to get this one you, you squeezed with uh, some pliers or you just squeeze and pull it off. Uh, don't forget to reattach that back as well and don't forget to put the uh, connector back in the very back over here reattach this here connection and you can tighten up both these clamps as well as these two clamps over here just like so so i'm gonna go grab a new Okay, you got both boxes back on. I got a brand new clamp on that hose just right there, you can see. Um, I got everything connected. The wiring harness is connected here. The wiring harness connected in the back. This little connector right here just snaps right back down. And uh, pretty much the only thing you need to do now is just reinstall the plastic guards. And I'll start with the big one first. Goes around right here in the back. Snaps down the back first, and in the middle, then right there on the front. And then the uh, front piece right here just gets snapped down right here, right on top. Uh, the other piece I have, let me grab it real quick. The other piece goes right here right in front 
And then you can go on ahead and reinstall the two intake air tubes. Oh man, this one is really, really in bad shape. Snap the front in here first. Then you can put the back hose pieces on. Like so, that one is really just destroyed. So um, you just gotta do your best you can with that one. Same for this side over here. Put the uh, back on first, snap it into place. Then you can go ahead and feed this tube around and uh, snap it onto the air box. And that's all there is to it. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Uh, first time on the channel, thanks for stopping by. I hope this video helped you out. And uh, as always, you guys, just hit the subscribe button on your way out. Tell your friends about the videos. All right, guys. Catch you later.